Hi, it's Kernetex here with a new series on Linux from scratch 11.0. So this time I'm going to be installing on an Apple Mac. It's a mid-2014 model which has a Haswell CPU, um, 8 gigabytes of RAM and a replacement disk. I took out the um, disk that it came with which, which was uh, basically just a standard laptop drive, two and a half inch drive, and I've put a SSD in just to improve the performance of the machine a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm just booting up, as you can see, the Mac. Um, what we need to do is several steps to prepare the machine ready to install Linux from scratch. So I'll be going through those steps. Um, Prime reason for this is down to um, well, there's two things really. A, to see if it can be done, and the main reason is that the um, hardware is getting a little bit old. As I say, it's a 2014 model. This is the last operating system that can be installed from Apple on this machine, Big Sur. Um, it's also quite noticeably slower than the previous version which was Catalina um, so it means that eventually this machine will be effectively made obsolete um, due to the fact there won't be any support within another year or two from Apple um, and it's a bit of a shame because it's still although it's a little bit on the slow side it's still a us perfectly usable machine for lightweight stuff like um, office work and so on web browsing um, but by installing Linux on it, we can extend the life of the hardware and make use of it for many more years to come. So what I'll be doing is showing how to um, prepare the machine, as I say, to prepare the disk to make room for um, the new Linux from scratch. Um, also, how to download a host Linux. Uh, the Apple, I was under the impression, I, I, and you'll pick this up as go along, I don't I don't know much about Apple machines at all, and I very little, and I just assume they're using a different, um, another flavour of Linux, but it's actually not Linux, it's, it is a Unix, but it's based on BSD, I believe, um, which is not compatible with Linux. Um, I don't know if it is possible, but I try to build... Linux from scratch from the Apple terminal and it failed eventually uh, probably because of the incompatibility of the systems. As I, say, I don't know if it would be possible with a lot of hacking but um, I just gave up in the end. It was easy just to boot from another distribution and build using that as if it was uh, just a bog standard uh, PC hardware. Um, now going on from that, the Mac, yes, it's based around Intel hardware and it's kind of like a, a PC, but it's not. Um, there's several differences, um, things like there's no external um, video ports and there's no VGA or DVI output. So obviously I'm using one of the Thunderbolt ports to um, get a display of the screen to you. And that means that there's um, one or two times I won't be able to show you what's on the screen because that port hasn't been activated. There's a couple of things we need to deal with um, that I won't be able to show you. So I'll try and describe what's happening in those situations. Um, what else is there? The, yeah, because um, of what we need to do, we need to put into another operating system. We need to have access to uh, the... Um, boot menu of uh, the Apple. Um, now the way the Apple boots is not standard. Yes it does use UEFI but it, as far as I can ascertain is not a standard implementation of UEFI. It's kind of based on two different versions of UEF, UEFI but neither one nor the other. Um, and also we have to be really careful when we're uh, touching the boot of the Apple. I, I managed to trash the system and I had to remove the hard disk and wipe it to allow the Apple to be usable again. Um, basically what happened, I made a configuration where it was trying to boot um, a system 
and that system was failing and it just kept on going around in this loop. I couldn't get out of this loop to get it or to stop it from booting this, this failed system. Um, the only way I found was to remove the disk, wipe it, and that allowed the Mac to know that it couldn't boot from anything and therefore I could plug in plug in a rescue disk and either install Mac or the Mac OS or boot from another disk. So we have to be really careful with that. Um, kind of to do with that is uh, another thing I need to mention. The Mac keyboard and mouse relies on Bluetooth signals to communicate with the Mac. Um, because we're going to be booting into another operating system and because um, we'll be installing Linux from scratch without a Bluetooth stack, uh, you'll find at some point either the distribution you'll be using or or when you actually try to boot into the Linux from scratch, the keyboard won't work. It just won't be ignored because there's no Bluetooth um, implementation in software at that point. Now, I suppose you could arguably install that from BLFS, but you've still got the chance that the um, keyboard or mouse won't be able to communicate with the Mac. So it's probably almost certainly necessary to have a USB keyboard and mouse to use with the Mac um, where you can plug it in the back into one of the or two of the USB ports um, and that will allow you to obviously use the Mac under any circumstances. Um, now I've, I've been using a uh, wireless keyboard and mouse with um, 100% success, I've had no problems with it. It's one of these ones where they share a, a dongle, so it's only one USB port taken up for both the keyboard and the mouse. Um, as I say, I've had no problems with that at all. If you want to be doubly sure, then it's probably best to use a wired mouse and a wired keyboard, but as I say, the keyboard and mouse set that I've been using, I've had no problems whatsoever. Um, if you've not ever used a ordinary PC keyboard with the Mac, then I need to tell you that a couple of keys are slightly different to that on the Mac. Um, whereas on the Mac we've got the Alt or, or Option button um, and it's like one key away from the space bar, it's next to the control button. On the PC keyboard it's reversed so it's actually next to the space bar but it's one key away from the control button. So that's something to bear in mind because we need to use that. Likewise, the command button is the equivalent to the Windows button or the Linux button if you've got a Linux keyboard. Um, and so I don't think we need to use that, but on the Mac keyboard, the command button's next to the space bar, but the equivalent button, as I say, on the PC keyboard is the Windows or the Linux button, the one with the logo on it. So that's worth bearing in mind. Um, apart from that, so the only thing you'll need is the Mac itself, obviously, an internet connection, and a USB keyboard and mouse. Um, it should be good to go. What we'll be doing is um, installing Linux from scratch side by side with the Mac OS, and this is purely protection in case the EFI or the UEFI boot into Linux from scratch doesn't work, we'll still have an operating system that we can easily boot, boot into and um, it helps prevent getting into that situation where the machine keeps on trying to boot into a system that's trashed basically. Um, I'll show you how we can um, switch between that. But ultimately the um, point is just to have Linux from scratch on the machine without um, the Mac OS, as I say, this ultimately is to uh, show how we can put Linux on a Mac, an Apple Mac machine, to replace the what will be an outdated operating system with an up-to-date Linux operating system, and therefore, as I say, extend the life of the hardware. So that's uh, basically what these videos are all about. In the next video, I'll be starting with the actual preparation for um, installing Linux from scratch, preparing the machine itself, preparing some space, and um, then we'll go on from, from there to actually build Linux from scratch.